Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes React. I'm Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. I'm Office Bloke Daz. Collectively, we are the three most insane weapons in the world. Ooh, insane. Ooh. What are you doing? You're insane. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to do that with your hands, otherwise you're not insane. You've got to put your tongue out as well and go, Whoa. <laughs> If you don't, don't clip that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's too late. Now, yeah, actually. it's, it's, it's way too late. late. Nah, I don't mind. Uh, yeah, we're going to do the 10 most insane weapons in the world. <laughs> we yeah. three are the most insane weapons. <laughs> or weapons, anyway. We're definitely weapons, yeah. <laughs> uh, insane in what way? Do you think it's going to be like crazy Ooh. technological advanced or do you think just weird? Just I think just like, uh, not technological advanced, something that shoots about excuse me about a billion bullets a minute right one of yeah, them yeah, that's yeah. insane and like maybe that, that rail gun that we saw that Things the like americans that, yeah. were developing and stuff just just outrageously yeah. powerful weapons is the, the way uh, i see it you know the germans had i think it was in in the second world war a, a bullet a, a gun that shot around corners and it had like a bent barrel and you could point it around the corner and shoot <laughs> I don't think it was like mass production, well, the but bullet it was just one shoot of, out the bend. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's probably a reason you don't see them everywhere. <laughs> I would guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's do Some it. Some of them live hacks they've got now with the uh, with the spy with the just camera. Five minute around, hacks or <laughs> looks around the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's do it. The ten most insane weapons in the world. Since the dawn of warfare, man has <clears throat> always strived to invent the perfect weapon to defeat his enemies. And it really is amazing how far we've come since then with some organizations inventing some unreal weapons. From a fully automatic 12-gauge shotgun to a crazy gun that fires over 1 million rounds per minute. Wow. Check out these 10 insane military technologies. Auto Assault 12 The AA-12 Auto Assault Shotgun is one of the rarest and most sought-after shotguns in the world. It was originally developed by Maxwell Acheson during his time at Military Armaments Corporation in the early 70s. Production rights were then sold to Jerry Baber of Military Police Systems in 1987 who released his improved model in 2004 and a year later it entered production after having no less than 200 changes and improvements over the original blueprint. The AA-12 is a fully automatic gas-operated API blowback shotgun chambered for two 3 quarter inch 12-gauge shells including buckshot flares, slugs, stun batons, and high-explosive Frag-12 grenade rounds. Jeez, it can yeah. use two types of magazines, a detachable eight-round box magazine or a drum with capacity ranging from 20 to 32 rounds. It has a cyclic rate of 300 rounds per minute with a muzzle velocity of 1,050 feet per second. The slow rate of fire makes single shots or bursts very easy to achieve by briefly pulling the trigger despite the fact that it fires in full auto only. Ex wow. I shot a semi-auto shotgun that looks like that. That was a, a drum. Mm. And I think it was 12 shots. But as fast as you could pull the trigger, that shot. Yeah. And I shot it at a tree. And then as soon as I stopped, you just heard... Yeah. <laughs> someone opened the door. Yeah, someone opened the door. <laughs> that was it. I don't know, you can get automatic <clears throat> shotguns. Never heard of one before. You, you can't in this country. You no. can get the semi-auto. Right. It, and it looked a lot like so that. So when it's full auto, you pull the trigger, you and can't stop it. Keeps going. Can you not stop it? No, you just take your finger off the trigger. No, no so you... Right, right. You don't you. To hold the trigger once. And it's like, no. That's like what I thought. Yeah. Like, that's what you used to have in them toys, wasn't it? <laughs> the toy when you used to hold the trigger and it made the noise. Take your finger off the button. Yeah. Uh, no yeah. noise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. That, I think the guy that I shot that with was an ex-military guy. And... You've got to have your shotgun license and you've got to have your firearms license and then apply for like, it was, it was a pain in the yeah, arse for him to get yeah, to the yeah. point where he could have it. Mm. And it's proper fun to shoot though, but expensive because you go through a lot I of cartridges. Yeah. Yeah. Banding bullet. It's interesting to know that even war has rules when it comes to using certain kinds of ammunition. During the First World War, German newspapers began accusing the French, along with mythical Belgian free shooters, of using what was called dum dum or expanding bullets. An official German complaint showed that the British were issuing this ammunition to its army. The bullet, a .455 MK4 round, was a flat nosed, unjacketed, man stopper type of ammunition. It was quickly withdrawn from frontline service because it was outlawed by the 1907 Hague Convention because they could cause terrible wounds and unnecessary suffering. It was the Indian Army that developed the hollow nose expanding bullet in Dum Dum, an industrial municipality outside of Calcutta and where the round got its name from. 
Bullets with pointed tips were then designed for use in the early 1900s to improve ballistic performance, but these had a tendency to tumble upon entering the human body and sometimes causing far more damage than dum-dums. The interesting thing is that hollow point ammunition is widely used by police forces in the USA because of its stopping power, along with the argument that restricting them would harm innocent bystanders. Nerve Agent VX When it comes to being the most insane and deadly weapons of all time, VX or Venomous Agent X should be at the top of the list. Stockpiles of the stuff have been continually destroyed since the Chemical Weapons Convention of 1997 outlawed their use. Classified by the United Nations as a weapon of mass destruction and defined by the CDC as the most potent of all nerve agents, VX is an incredibly potent and rapid-acting poison that cripples the nervous system and causes total paralysis and, eventually, the victim suffocates. It is fatal after breathing in just 25 to 30 milligrams, or just 10 milligrams if it comes into contact with the skin. Once in the body, it works rapidly by acting on a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which neurons rely on to send signals to muscles ordering them to move. Once the signals are sent, acetylcholine breaks down, ending the line of communication. VX prevents acetylcholine from breaking down, resulting in an overabundance of communication. The muscles get overstimulated, and the brain can no longer control the body's movements. Symptoms include blurred vision, drooling and sweating, rapid breathing, and irregular heart rate. It is when the muscles that guide the chest's rise and fall during breathing are affected that it becomes a major problem, and when they are paralyzed, breathing becomes impossible. And it all happens within minutes. No wonder this terrible weapon is outlawed. Is that what the movie The Rock's about? VX cast. I'm not seeing <coughs> that. Uh, I don't know. It's like Sean Connery and. Um, it's a wrestling thing. The no, wrestler. That's the Rock. <laughs> no, it's a movie. But it's about like a chemical nerve agent that gets stolen oh, yeah. by kind of like American mercenaries, yeah. ex-military yeah. guys. I'm sure that's called VX gas in that. But it's yeah, in these kind sure. of green glass things. Well, that's for movie, uh, what's in it? Make it, look, <coughs> make it look bad. Yeah, yeah, it can't just be a little bit of powder. No, no. With a bit of yeah. like steam coming off it and yeah. vapour. Yeah. yeah, in like a proper like neon. <coughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Bottle that's behind, Nasty like, stuff, that, isn't it? It's proper Metal barriers. Grim. Yeah. Yeah, it's in some sort of missile thing where you do that yeah. and open it and there's loads of yeah. glass. Yeah. Things of it yeah. that are all bright green. <laughs> it, looks, it looks cool. But yeah, yeah proper like grim stuff. It's a bit of powder in a bag. Yeah. In reality. Hydrogen Bomb The hydrogen bomb or thermonuclear bomb is more powerful than atomic or fission bombs like the ones that were used to devastate the Japanese cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima during World War II. Those bombs exploded with a yield of 15 and 20 kilotons of TNT respectively. In contrast, the first test of a hydrogen bomb in the United States happened in November 1952, which yielded an explosion of 10,000 kilotons of TNT, and by 1954, the United States detonated a bomb in nuclear test Castle Bravo, which had a yield of 15 megatons of TNT, 2.5 times more than the predicted 6.0 megatons, which was the result of using lithium deuteride resulting in a tritium bonus where cascading neutrons transformed it into tritium and helium, and tritium causes extremely energetic fusion. At 6.45 a.m. local time on March 1, 1954, the device was detonated and many observers knew something had gone spectacularly wrong in the first seconds. The flash from the bomb was so great wow. that men saw their bones appear as shadows through their flesh and streams of light shone through the smallest cracks and pinholes in secured doors and hatches. More than 30 miles away aboard Navy ships, sailors said the heat was like having a blowtorch aimed at their bodies. The shockwave was incredible, almost knocking observation aircraft from the sky. <clears throat> and then there was the fireball, stretching four miles in diameter wow. and hotter than the surface of the sun. It was the biggest explosion in history at the time. But later, the Soviet Union would drop something much bigger. Metal That's absolutely mm. insane, mm. isn't it, when yeah. you put it like that? Yeah. You know you've Terrible. you know you've messed up when you can see someone's bones through their mm. skin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it just sounds hideous. It's just bizarre. Yeah. Thirty miles away in the heat. It's crackers, isn't it? Miles. That's that's a lot of heat that isn't yeah. it? If you can feel it from thirty miles away, yeah. I mean jeez. Storm. 
If a name ever fit a weapon perfectly, then it would be the Metal Storm. This thing is an Australian-made US-funded weapon and has 36 barrels put together in a box configuration that can reportedly fire 1.62 million rounds per minute and wow. fires 180 rounds in a 0.01 second burst and at its peak, it can send a wall of 24,000 9mm rounds moving at Mach 5. The fastest mechanical weapon system can only spit out around 6,000 rounds per minute, but the Metal Storm ammunition cartridge is special and has no shell casing and no primer. In fact, the gun itself has no trigger hammer or breech block. The craziest thing is that the only moving part is the bullets, which are stacked up nose to tail in each barrel and are fired electronically one at a time from front to rear. Although it's really insane, the cost and the weight, not to mention the setup time for single use, keep the application of this weapon very circumstantial. Like when you need to shoot something one million times in just 60 seconds. Plague bomb. Wow. It does seem so pointless, doesn't it? But yeah, you wonder what, like, say, what application it it'd be used for, don't you? Something like that. So, yeah, a bit of a strange one. That they must have had something in mind when they sort of commissioned it. And, yeah, but I don't, yeah, you don't work on, just, people just work on anything now, don't yeah. they? And like, yeah. come up with something here we have it, yeah. and it's like, what are you going to use it for? I don't know, but made it. Yeah, M money left yeah. over in the budget. <laughs> yeah. So you better start working on something. <laughs> Located in Harbin, China, Unit 731 was created with legitimate intentions by the Japanese government to promote public health and conduct research that would benefit Japanese soldiers, including how long someone could survive hunger, thirst, and certain diseases. But Japanese soldiers are Chinese. Said so Japanese. Said so Japanese, didn't it? It was in China, wasn't it? Harbin, yeah. China. It showed a finger China, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. But that, that's what I said. Maybe it was post Second World War. Mm. But, but China yeah. were. Allies, weren't they, mm. in the Second World War? So why would Japan be there? Maybe it's peacetime. Yeah, Maybe it's know. just a collaborative effort at some point. Yeah. As the war went on, the Japanese turned to using prisoners of war as test subjects, and at least 250,000 people perished at the hands of experimentation. The most terrible things you can imagine were done here. So terrible, we can't speak about them on this video. But one of the things they tested was releasing rats infected with bubonic plague with the intention of infecting the prisoners so they could be studied. This led to the plague bomb, and in China's eastern province of Xinjiang and central Hunan province from 1940 to 1942, rats were airdropped, and people who lived in these areas describes how people dropped like flies in hours or days, their bodies swollen and black. Luckily for the United States, the Japanese surrender on September 2, 1945 stopped a plan for kamikaze pilots to attack San Diego with planes filled with plague-infected fleas. Jesus. Yeah. Serious shit. It's not yeah. something you hear about when it's like the efficacy of using nukes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, dropping the plague on our country is just crackers, know, yeah. isn't it? It's terrible. Someone did that in Oldham. <laughs> two weeks ago. <laughs> no one noticed. <laughs> and Seek 3 laser weapon system. Thanks to some early science fiction stories, laser weapons have always fascinated many people. For a while, many people thought such weapons would be impossible to create, or would be powerful enough to do serious damage so that it could be used in warfare. But the future has arrived. The ANSEQ-3 laser weapon system, or more easily called the XN-1 laws, is a directed energy laser weapon developed by the United States Navy. The first prototype was installed on the USS Ponce for testing in 2014, where it worked perfectly against low-end threats and took out a UAV and a simulated small boat attacker. LAWS uses an infrared beam with a solid-state laser array which can be tuned to destroy a target using 30,000 watts of power to fry sensors, burn out motors, or detonate explosive materials such as rockets or bombs mounted on warplanes or helicopters. New that's, mm, that, that's, that's pretty madly. cool, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, I presume the future. maybe missile defense systems or something. Yeah, like that. Laser things that yeah. yeah, they were talking about years ago about mm. having things like that in space, mm. weren't they? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what's come of it, because I think China and Russia were kicking off about it, but I'm sure the US were looking at that like an air defense. Uh, China and Russia kick off about anything they haven't got. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. Not fair. Yeah. But also, don't, they get it. don't the states now have the um, Space Force 
as part of the armed forces. Wasn't that something Trump brought in? He's talked I'm to sure. I'm sure. It'll happen. I think he did. Yeah. I'm sure we've watched a video where they said yeah, they combined space, space force, force yeah. and blah blah yeah. blah. Yeah. I'm not so, sure anything ever happened with it. Space lasers. Yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah. They're space like stations, soon. like police stations, like. Yeah. You know I mean, you get arrested in space, dicking about. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Tron bomb. <clears throat> Another weapon sounding like it's right out of a science fiction novel is the neutron bomb. It's also called an enhanced radiation warhead and is a specialized nuclear weapon that doesn't produce as large a blast as a conventional nuclear warhead and instead releases large amounts of lethal radiation. It's actually a small thermonuclear bomb with a few kilograms of plutonium or uranium ignited by a conventional explosive which creates a fission trigger to ignite a fusion explosion in a capsule containing several grams of deuterium tritium. Still with us? Good. <laughs> this bomb might have only a 1 kiloton yield, but in a 1.2 mile radius, the fusion reaction would throw off a powerful wave of neutron and gamma radiation penetrating through armor, several feet of earth, and through living tissue. Electromagnetic Railgun that video we watched on it, someone in the comment section did point out it's been shelled Shelf, now yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Dream for ages, the railgun is unlike any other weapon used in warfare. It's faster, cheaper, and more lethal than a conventional type of gun or cannon. Conventional guns or cannons use an explosive propellant to send a projectile at its target. But the railgun uses a heavy solid slug that relies on its mass and velocity to do heavy damage. In a railgun, the two rails act like wires with a magnetic field circulating around each rail. It takes two minutes to charge the weapon and only a fraction of a second to fire. Upon impact, the slug projectile superheats, which results in a hypersonic spear of slag capable of penetrating armor, melting steel, and burning everything else in its path. Such a round could be designed to fragment before impact, showering its target with high-velocity molten metal. Compared with missiles that can cost from $500,000 to $1.5 million each, the railgun offers a much more economical means of engaging the enemy. Project Thor This project has been looked at for many years, and the interesting thing is that the US military has looked at it again as recently as 2017. Also called Rods from God, Project Thor was supposed to be some kind of satellite or launcher vehicle that would be launched into orbit with 20-foot long by 1-foot diameter tungsten rods. It would then move over its intended target and launch its projectiles. Using kinetic energy, the tungsten rods could end up traveling at over Mach 10 with an explosive impact of 11.5 tons of TNT. It is said that the US has the technology to deploy this weapon at will, but the biggest drawback is the cost and also the concern that non-tungsten components of the projectile would melt if exceeded Mach 10. Whatever the case is, Project Thor would certainly be a terrifying weapon. That concludes our list of 10 insane military technologies. We hope you enjoyed the video and want to know which one of these was your favorite. That's crazy, mm. though, isn't it? Yeah, there's some nuts stuff out there, isn't there? <clears throat> yeah, just a bit. Cause some damage. Just dropping tungsten tubes from space <laughs> onto your target. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Bizarre, well, that I've not I don't know if they've tested it though. I don't know, do you remember? I know we were in the war with Afghanistan. I don't know, there was a lot of issues about uh, being in like hollowed out caves in, in the middle That's of nowhere right. yeah. you can get them out. Would that, wouldn't that be the sort of thing you use that for? I think possibly would. Have a go. Yeah, yeah. I think flying yeah. little drones in there with explosives mm. on would be the yeah. way, wouldn't it? Yeah. Probably would now, wouldn't they? Mm. Navigate yeah. the cave systems and map them at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Technology with drones and that just going yeah, crazy yeah, now, isn't yeah. it? They're getting yeah. better and better all the time. Mm. Some of yeah. that stuff on there. It'd be interesting to yeah. see if you watch that video again, <clears throat> or I don't know, a similar video again in two or three years' time, how much yeah. has changed, what the, what the army. Yeah, but the new ones are, because I think mm. they're coming up with things all the time, aren't they? New technology and new weapons. Yeah, the way technology is rapidly in, it's like changes, it is. isn't it? Sort of thing. It's, it's yeah, crazy. Usually. Anyway, yeah. good that. Mm. Hope you guys yeah. enjoyed it too. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Cheers.